Greetings, welcome Mechanical Engineering class. Um, today we are going to deal with foundry work. But before we go into the whole business of foundry or casting, I would like to encourage everybody to stay home, one, and secondly, to take the necessary precautions to protect yourselves and family members from contracting this disease, COVID-19. Alright. But for today's lesson, we want to outline or discuss the following objectives. What is foundry? Foundry equipment, material for foundry or casting, and of course how to do this thing safely. Alright. What is foundry? Foundry is that aspect of mechanical engineering that deals with the melting of metals and pouring those molten metals into a prepared mold or a casting. Right? Those on cooling will solidify to form whatever object it is that we desire. Why do we do casting or why do we do foundry? First, let us discuss the fact that whatever is made in engineering is done by either foundry or casting or by way of fabrication. Foundry is done in cases where a lack of a particular shape or object is required and hence it prevents distortion and controls a particular shape. Right? So, we heat the metal as stated before and we get the particular mold and, and this leads us to our next item which is the foundry equipment. That mold or that casting is known as a flask. Right? So the prepared mold is actually done in a flask and that's the first of our foundry equipment. There are other foundry equipment that is required of you in an assignment that you will see on the board. You will draw and label each of these foundry equipment from either a textbook or wherever you can find a clear diagram. Right? So the flask, of course, is a box. It is where the prepared mold is formed and where the molten metal will be poured. In pouring the molten metal, this brings us to our, our, not, our next equipment, in pouring the molten metal, you need to allow the hot gases to escape from an opposite end, which will prevent things like air bubbles coming in. So you have a, what you call a riser on one end and a runner on the other end. The molten material is poured into the runner and the hot gases are allowed to come out from the riser. Right? You will also see when you would have poured enough molten material when you see that molten material floating up on the other end, which is the riser. So you will need to draw the shape of what you call a screw pin that is used for the design of those risers and runners. A draw spike. Some texts refer to it as a gimlet. A draw spike is what you use to remove the pattern from the prepared sand. Remember I mentioned sand for something further. But the draw spike is used to remove the, the, the pattern from the prepared sand. And the rammers are used to pack the sand densely around the pattern to ensure that it is, its structure is intact. Spoon tool and the trowels are used to repair any damages caused to the moon in extracting the pattern. All right? What we just looked at so far, what is foundry and the foundry equipment? Materials for foundry are cast. There are two things we use for sand, for, for, um, for casting, two materials. 
it is either poured into a prepared sand moon or into a metal moon. And that now covers materials for, 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 some, for foundry and factory. So I want to mention now how exactly we are going to do this safely. And how exactly is I've always said to you students of my class that one of the first things to recognize in safety for any topic in mechanical engineering is PPE, personal protective equipment. You must dress for the particular task you have ahead. So, firstly, you will mention the fact that the appropriate clothing must be worn to include leather gloves and a face shield or goggles. Secondly, you must have a controlled pour. And that means you must be able to, from wherever you are standing, which should be some distance from the container in which the molten metal is, you must be able to provide a controlled pour, meaning there should be no splashes. There should be no erratic movement, right? That's two. Third, the only persons near the pouring area should be the operator, and of course, if he needs a helper, right? And fourthly, adequate ventilation should be in the area that the molten pour is done. And you must also Take precautions whenever you are adding new material for melting. Of course, at that time, the materials we use aluminium. And aluminium comes in many forms as you recycle it. It might be an old rim, it might be a part of an old engine. But what is necessary is that these things must not be thrown into the furnace, but with, added with some amount of precaution. Right? Um, blowbacks may take place from time to time. A blowback might be a reaction of the hot gases to the new material being introduced to it, and therefore you must be a safe distance away from the flask. Right? Um, we are going to just round off right now this lesson. Remember to complete the assignment, you will be finding a lot of valuable information once you do this assignment and we will continue at a later time. Thank you very much.